Um, thank you, Dean Kessler. That was beautiful. Um, very honored. Thank you, New York Youth Symphony, Shauna Quill, Andy Klaus, and Jeremy Adriano. Thank you, Allison, Fred, Sharon, Jim, Tom, Whitney, Andrea, and all of those whom I have the privilege of addressing tonight. At this point, you'd expect the usual quip about jazz musicians improvising their remarks. And yes, normally I'd speak off the cuff, but I wanted to be very intentional and brief tonight, so I've prepared a speech. I've been honored for my achievements, received honorary degrees, lifetime awards, plaques, lucite, and trophies adorn my cabinets. That's all right. <laughs> my wife told me not to ham it up, so if I ham it up too much, let me know, okay? <laughs> I've been given the opportunity to make music my life's work, to compose, perform, conduct, and travel throughout the planet doing so. It's okay. At the end of the day, a stage is a stage, a plane is a plane, and while I value my work deeply and love it, it is not what hugs me or makes me chicken soup when I feel icky. I have various titles, artistic director, founder, chairperson, associate dean, professor, but those beautiful obligations pale compared to husband, father, brother, friend, mentor, mentee. Though we're not wealthy, my beloved Allison and I have comfort, we live by coastally in modest apartments and periodically stop working long enough to enjoy hanging out with our sons and their partners. Still, at the end of the day, our seeming stability does not guarantee hugs or chicken soup. In trying to come up with something that merits all this recognition, I, I've come up empty, literally. What I came up with is this. The thing that I do best is empty myself. Give away everything. Whether what I do is good, bad, or mediocre, I can't keep it anyway, so I put it on manuscript paper or pound it out at the piano. I leave it on stages, in classrooms, recording studios, and ultimately in every relationship that I have, great or small. As an educator, I demand that my students open my brain and literally pick through it till they find what they need. If you've ever seen me play, you'll see that I have my eyes wide open as I interact with my colleagues, looking for that shared moment of musical intimacy. In fact, if I do it right, it's like an out-of-body experience in which I'm just observing from a distance as I connect with that beautiful, nameless, faceless thrill of not being the center of attention, of redirecting the focus to others. Education is seeing a young person's mind engaged in that greatest truth in music, that the notes are meaningless, but the investment is in others is what makes one a great performer, composer, improviser, and human being. You can't do that if you're busy pontificating, playing mindlessly, or worrying about your investment portfolio. Really, the true joy I get is from seeing the platforms I create benefiting others. If you ask me what my profession is, I will gleefully tell you I'm a campfire builder, building campfires around which others gather for warmth. I play the piano, okay? I'm a decent composer. I'm a weak administrator, and I seriously can't cook very well. But what I do best is divest myself of need, empty myself of concern, and get about the good business of building for others. This is what education is truly all about. The Afro-Latin Jazz Orchestra began as an in-residence ensemble at Jazz and Lincoln Center. It became a campfire five years later when I left Jazz and Lincoln Center to create our own institution with a commitment to education as being equal to performance. We started with a $40,000 loan to put on the concert season, an unpaid residence in South Shore High School in Brooklyn, and a commitment to building community. In a very short 15 years, we've challenged the notion of what nonprofit arts organizations can do. We ended last year with 47 teaching artists in 20 New York City school districts, a pre-professional training program, a touring season, a New York City concert season, and a weekly stream that is on still to this day every Sunday that raised $110,000 for freelance musicians that lost their livelihoods during the pandemic. This year, the city of New York pledged millions of dollars towards the construction of the Afro-Latin Music Performance and Community Center in Timbali Terrace, a 19-story affordable housing building to be constructed in Spanish Harlem. That's why this Kesselman Award is so meaningful to me. It's not a good review, a grant, or a commission. Rather, it recognizes my efforts as an educator, giving my students everything, everything I know, 
warning them of the glaring inconsistencies and contradictions in my character and in the character of all of us. I demand they, they analyze critically everything they read, here or are taught. The Kesselman Award means that I have done what I set out to do in reminding young students that the violin, the tuba, or the composer's pencil is secondary to the task of caring for others before you're meeting your own needs. It helps me to continue the endless task of giving everything away as quickly as I can so I can feel light and full at the same time. This is truly what education is all about. The prophet Lester Bowie, blessed be his name, said never let the notes get in the way of the music. What he meant was that the deep truth of life does not come from virtuosic technique, degrees, awards, or recognition. It comes from that sacred moment when I cease to be, you cease to be, but you and I become a we. A shared space is sacred. The gift cannot be kept. It can only be given away. And the best part of being is emptying. The New York Youth Symphony is doing that sacred work. The sacred educational work of turning instrumentalists into artists, writers into composers, students into thinkers, and ensembles into communities. When you examine this work, you see a commitment to that deeper goal. Never let the notes get in the way of a young person's development. We can fine tune their scales, but along the way, we can also affirm their innate beauty and consecrated journey to access the humanity so that their music can soar. Thank you. Arturo O'Farrell. That is beautiful. Thank you so much. Stay right here. Thank you. You and I uh, got to meet because you had a residency in uh, the green space. You played an extensive uh, group of concerts for us, and I want to thank you for that. Uh, we, we have a little surprise for you, a, a musical tribute. Remember when Shauna said that they only had two rehearsals? So in addition to all the other stuff they're, they're playing, they worked up a little tune. And if I understand it right, you've dedicated this piece of music to young musicians. This is a work of yours. It's called Fathers and Sons from Havana to New York and back by Arturo Farrell. <laughs> 